The Gospel reading for today forms part of chapters 14, 15, 16, and 17 of John's Gospel, which is normally referred to as Jesus' final discourse. However, Jesus is simply having a conversation with his disciples, with his friends. And what Jesus is seeking to do in this conversation is to move his disciples from the kind of relationship they once knew with him to a deeper, more meaningful relationship with him and the Father. And he wishes them, and he also wishes us, to realize that we can recognize him in the Father. And it was difficult for the disciples back then to realize that even though, and for us too, even though that we have the scriptures, it is still difficult for us to understand. Nevertheless, when Jesus says, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them, whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine mine, but is from the Father who sent me, the underlying point he is making here is that if we don't love him, we won't obey the, his commandment to love one another. And if we aren't loving each other, it is much a pretty good indicator that we don't, don't truly love him. Hmm, we will say point Jesus is making is if we don't love him, we won't obey his commandment to love one another. If we aren't loving each other, it is a pretty good indicator that we don't truly love him. Think about that. And this is important to our Lord because he knew that his life here on earth was coming to an end and when he is gone from this earth, when he's no longer in human flesh and blood, his disciples and those who follow him will need someone or something to turn to, to guide them, to hold on to. Which is why he told them that he has said these things while he was still with them. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. And what our Lord is saying to his disciples and he's saying to us today as well is that we are not going to be alone. We are not alone. And he was telling his disciples who were listening to him, and he tells us who have his word, the scriptures to read, that what he is teaching us, we do not have to take it all in and try to remember it. We just have to listen. We just need to read his gospel. We just need to hear his good news because the Holy Spirit is the one who comes in his name to help us remember all what he has said. Not only help us remember, but he will lead us and guide us. He will be there with us to support us and walk with us every step of the way. For that's who the Holy Spirit is. He is Jesus in spiritual form instead of in human form. The Holy Spirit is Jesus in spiritual form instead of human form. And then Jesus goes on to speak on a topic which is very much misunderstood. That is the difference between peace, as we tend to think of it, and the peace which Jesus offers us. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Jesus gives us peace that is very different and very unlike the peace which the world offers. And because of that, we do not need to be anxious or concerned or to be afraid. I once wondered if Christ had any anxiety or fearful moments, thinking if the movement he started will grow and blossom, or was it going to come to a dead end with these guys he had selected as his disciples? 
then I remember that God is in control and he can do anything he pleases. So what Jesus was telling his disciples was just to reassure them. But the question we need to ask is, what makes Jesus' peace different from the world's peace? What makes Jesus' peace different from the world's peace? Why is it that we so often misunderstand the difference between the two? And the reason is that we look for peace as the world offers. And the world's peace is normally not a peace that is realistic or that lasts because we are imperfect human beings. The peace of which we often think and will love is one that we could have peace with our parents, peace with our children, peace with our families and friends, peace with our colleagues at work, peace with our neighbors, peace in our country, peace in our world. We wish that people would stop being so mean and argumentative with one another or that we could just be contented with what we have. We wish for a peace that will just put an end to all the rumbling and conflict and confusion that goes on in our lives and in the world. And it will be wonderful if the peace which Christ offers will just make all that happen for us. That the peace which he offers will be just like a raisin, a magic wand, and voila, it's all over. It's all gone. But that's not the kind of peace that Jesus offers. The peace which Christ offers is both present and its future. And I'm sure we have all heard of the word shalom. It is a Hebrew word for, for peace. And when the word shalom is used, it is not the type of peace that is meant to bring an end to war and conflict. It is not the peace we hope will take place in the war between Ukraine and Russia. It is not the kind of peace which we hope will take place between sibling rivalry and or families and friends. Shalom, or the peace of which Christ speaks and offers, is more than just the non-existence of conflict or dissension. Shalom has a future element to it, which the world's peace does not have. Christ's peace is both present and eternal, while the world's peace is only temporal. Christ's peace tells us that there will be a time in the future when all wrong things and the bad things and the terrible things will be made right again, will be made whole and good as at the beginning of creation. But the good thing about the peace which our Lord teaches and offers us can also be experienced in the present, right here, right now. That this peace which Christ offers is not just some high in the sky kind of peace. We do not have to wait until we die and get to heaven to receive it. It is a peace that we can experience today and each day on this earth. The peace, my friends, which Jesus offers does not necessarily bring an end to conflicts and wars and problems and disagreements and fights and arguments, although it can. After all, anything is possible with God. But we also have free will. We also have free will. What Christ's peace focuses on is particularly what is going on inside of us, what is going on within us, rather than what is going on outside of us or around us. It starts with us, each one of us. For peace which we so desperately need begins with us as individuals. It starts with us wishing to change who we are and what we think and what we say and what we do. We have our part to play. 
not just to cause or to be involved in conflicts or disagreements and problems and then wish or hope that God in Christ will make them all go away. We need to play our part as well in bringing about peace in the midst of conflicts, in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of disagreements. Jesus' peace is not about changing someone else, it is about changing us. And we alone can change our hearts. We alone can change the way we think. We alone can change the things we say. We alone can change the things we do. Only we can do that individually. And we all have a desire to live with hearts that are peaceful. We all long for inner peace, that peace in which our lives may be going through turmoil, but we can still have the peace of knowing that all will be well. And finding that peace is not easy, but it begins with us. Have you ever realized that sometimes you can be in the noisiest of places, but yet you still have that inward peace inside of you? It begins with making changes in every aspect of our lives. And we often long for things like the inner peace in our lives, but do not wish to put in the work it takes to achieve it. And yet we put in the work for other things, which on reflection is normally less important than the things we should place importance in. And so my friends, the peace which Jesus offers is an inner peace we know and feel in our hearts but it is exemplified and experienced outwardly when we love each other. And we are able to do so because we know and find in our inner selves that God loves us. He first loved us and will always love us. And that gives us the motivation to love. And in the same way Jesus loves, we are called to love one another. The peace which Jesus offers is the peace we are to offer others. A peace that even in the midst of conflict and arguments and dissension, we see others as human beings made like us, made in the image and likeness of God, and loved by God as we too are loved by him. And when we possess the peace which Jesus offers, there's no need to be troubled. There's no need to be afraid. Because we know with the help of the Holy Spirit, we are being led and guided. We are being comforted and supported each and every day of our lives and on the journeys which God has prepared for us to travel in this life. Amen.